Namaskaram everyone. Nebulization is a frequently done procedure in pediatrics and pediatrics ICU and I think it is very important to know the latest recommendations and the basic details about nebulization in all children and this is the latest guidelines uh, these are the Indian guidelines on nebulization therapy published in the year 2022 in the journal of uh, Indian Journal of Tuberculosis and uh, in this part of the video that is the first part we shall be discussing the basic principles of nebulization and the technical aspects. So talking about the particle size the ideal particle size for nebulization is variable and actually it is dependent on the target site of action of the drugs. So for bronchodilators the ideal particle size should be 3 to 6 millimeters and for the drugs which require a greater peripheral intrapulmonary deposition for example and antimicrobials which need to be deposited in the alveoli the particle size is still smaller that is it should be less than 2 meter. The fill volume of the nebulization chamber of 4 to 6 ml and a flow rate of 6 to 8 liters per minute using compressed air is primarily used for obstructive airway disorders like bronchial asthma and higher flow rates of up to 8 to 10 liters per minute and even greater fill volumes are to be taken for drugs which are meant for intrapulmonary deposition that is which need to be deposited in the alveoli and not the bronchi bronchioles it themselves. The nebulizer reservoir bags like the one which is shown in the picture it can be useful to attain higher doses and for utilization of expensive medications more efficiently and optimal time for nebulization at a single go is approximately 10 minutes. So approximately 10 minutes nebulization machine should be on for a single time of nebulization. Now let us know about the types of nebulizer equipments, their choices and their use. So basically there are three types of nebulizers. The first and the most common used is the pneumatic or the jet nebulizers. The second type are ultrasonic nebulizers which have a limited use since they are not suitable for suspensions, liposomes, viscous solutions and proteins and all they have large residual volumes. Vibrating mesh nebulizers are more efficient but they are very expensive. So ultrasonic nebulizers basically they use ultrasonic sound waves which are pushed into the liquid to turn into aerosols. These waves create aerosols which can be easily inhaled through mask or mouthpiece. In vibrating mesh nebulizers as the liquid passes through multiple holes in the mesh the vibrating action generates medicated aerosols. So this is the mechanism of action of the types of nebulizers. The ultrasonic nebulizers as have already spoken above they have large residual volumes, they are not able to aerosolize viscous solutions including liposomal formulations and they might also lead to degradation of heat sensitive materials uh, for example alpha 1 antiprotease and Dornis alpha and even antibiotics. So you have to be very cautious and they are not used frequently in practice. On the other hand, mesh nebulizer is recommended as the most efficient device in terms of relative efficiency with a very short nebulization time, short residual volume and not leading to any change in the temperature of the drug during nebulization, therefore not causing uh, heating. While using mesh nebulizer, the dosage of the drug may need to be reduced and the patient be more closely monitored for the clinical response and any adverse effects due to overdosages because it is very efficient. It can however also denature non-complex supercoiled DNA like the jet nebulizers do. So what different solutions or suspensions are suitable to be administered by the different machines? The drug dispersion in the aerosol generated on nebulization is more homogeneous if we are using a solution rather than a suspension. Like we use salbutamol respiratory solution in patients with asthma and we don't use suspension. The use of an ultrasound nebulizer, ultrasonic nebulizer is not recommended for drugs in suspension form as previously spoken and changes any change in the physical chemical properties which include viscosity, density, surface tension and or iron concentration of the drug 
This may also impact the nebulizer output and the aerosol characteristics. It is therefore recommended to, you, to use the jet nebulizer if at all the viscosity of the solution is not known. Mesh nebulizers are not suitable for solutions with very high viscosity. Mixing of drugs of various formulations in the nebulizer cup is recommended only to be done if the physico-chemical compatibility of the combination is ensured. That is, there is no change in color, no change in odor and there is no haziness or precipitation. Lack of physical incompatibility, however, does not rule, does not rule out chemical decomposition because chemical reaction might occur between the two drugs. So only those mixtures, only those drug mixtures are recommended to be used where the chemical stability that is less than 10% degradation of each substance has been shown and the pH value, osmolality and the physical characteristics are shown to be maintained over a period of 24 hours after mixing them. Also, co-administration of different drugs can impact the aerosol characteristics, nebulizer output aerodynamic properties, stability, potency and safety of the individual drugs. Therefore, mixing of drugs is only to be done where these factors have been ascertained well. The choice of the interface should also be based on the convenience to the patient. Therefore, the mouthpiece is the recommended preferred interface. Now, this is something new to me and I guess it must be new to many of us. Mouthpiece is the recommended preferred interface over face masks because it has improved drug delivery during nebulization therapy and the drug deposition on face and eyes which is significant with face masks is also eliminated with the use of the mouthpiece. The use of mouthpiece as against face mask is particularly recommended when high doses of anticholinergics are used to avoid the risk of glaucoma or blurred vision. This is mainly for adults. And it is also to be preferred when inhaled steroids are to be administered because it leads to better deposition of the drug inside the uh, lungs and lesser deposition on the eyes and on the face. But remember that face masks should be used for nebulization in acutely ill patients and in infants and young children who find it difficult to use a mouthpiece. The design of face masks also has an influence on drug delivery but the distance between the face mask and the patient does not make any difference, much difference. The front loaded face masks are preferred in comparison to the bottom loaded face masks. I think everyone must be, be able to understand the difference what is meant by front loaded and what is meant by bottom loaded masks. The front loaded masks are preferred for better drug delivery but to minimize drug deposition on the face and eyes while using anticholinergic drugs, a bottom loaded face mask is preferred. I guess everyone is understanding what is being spoken about in this guideline, this particular recommendation. Wearing a nose clip with a mouthpiece is not recommended because it is uncomfortable to the patient and its role in improving the drug delivery is also uncertain. A proper fit and an adequate seal of the mask must always be ensured. The occlusion of the holes on the face mask does not improve drug delivery. However, use of a valve mask is recommended for better drug delivery. Now, a pacifier equipped mask is recommended to be used to deliver nebulized drugs to infants. Because now this is the, in this picture, I am not showing a nebulizer mask. I am showing a pacifier dust mask for the baby. Because the nebulization can be, but it is somewhat similar to this, the nebulization can be performed when the baby is suckling the pacifier and therefore this kind is more acceptable for the infants and has aerosol deposition similar to a conventional nebulizer mask. Now the blow by technique is not recommended for use during nebulization. Now someone may ask what is the blow by technique? In this, we hold the oxygen tubing 2 inches away from the face or insert the tubing in a paper cup to administer nebulization. This is not at all to be used in um, babies or in any person for nebulization per se as per this guidelines. 
Now, high flow, flow nasal cannula circuit when in use in the emergency department and ICU is recommended to be utilized for nebulized therapy because it has a very high efficiency for administration of nebulization. But use of heliox during nebulization does not provide any additional benefit. Now, what is heliox? Heliox is a mixture of helium and oxygen that has low gas density and basically it tends to change the turbulent flow into a smoother laminar flow reducing the pressure required to achieve a given flow rate. So, if we use heliox during nebulization through high flow nasal cannula, it does not provide any additional benefit. Also, various factors such as position of nebulizer in the circuit, adapter use, the size of cannula and the type of HFNC system influence the drug delivery. Placement of nebulizer prior to the humidifier in HFNC system is a preferable position. Besides HFNC, Aerosol delivery can also be effectively done via other devices such as bubble CPAP, synchronized inspiratory positive airway pressure and nasal high flow. Now coming on to the hood interface. This is recommended as an efficient and effective technique for administering nebulization therapy to neonates and infants with better tolerability and therapeutic index than face mask because it has lesser nebulization time. Preference should be given to the hood interface over other masks while administering aerosol therapy especially to neonates and face side position is preferred rather than face up position within the hood interface because it has similar lung delivery of the drugs and lesser facio ocular deposition of the drugs. Now patients with acute asthma that is obstructive airway diseases are recommended to be nebulized with oxygen driven equipment because there is a component of hypoxemia related to it and patients with COPD are basically they are to be nebulized by air driven equipment this is for adults and single use devices should never be reused now cleaning of nebulization nebulizer should be done after each use and it is to be done with sterile or distilled water when cleaning once or twice a week use liquid soap for thorough washing and use sterile water for final rinsing now, I think everyone is clear about the fact. If not, I am just recapitulating it. Cleaning means removal of visible soiling of our equipment. Disinfection means removal of most of the microbes. And sterilization of an equipment means removal of all microbes and even the spores of the microbes. Nebulizer should be cleaned after every use. Now, Regular disinfection after cleaning the nebulizer is recommended after each use to prevent bacterial contamination and colonization in the equipment. Disinfectants recommended for soaking nebulizer include either one of the following 70% isopropyl alcohol for 5 minutes, 3% hydrogen peroxide for 30 minutes, white vinegar and hot water in 1 is to 3 ratio for 60 minutes, household bleach in water in 1 is to 50 ratio for 3 minutes. But one must remember that disinfection is also recommended by simply boiling the nebulizer for 5 minutes or by microwave heating for 5 minutes or by washing in a dishwasher at a temperature of more than 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Manufacturer's guidelines however should always be kept in mind for cleaning and disinfection. So to summarize. The ideal particle size for nebulization is 3 to 6 mm for bronchodilators and less than 2 mm for drugs requiring intra-alveolar or intra-pulmonary deposition. The fill volumes should be 4 to 5 ml for obstructive disorders and 6 to 8 ml for intra-alveolar uh, deposition of the drugs. The optimal duration of nebulization is 10 minutes at a single go. There are three types of nebulizers, pneumatic or jet nebulizers which we use most commonly ultrasonic nebulizers which have their own limitations and vibrating mesh nebulizers which are the most efficient but are very expensive. Drug dispersion is more homogeneous if we use solutions rather than suspensions for nebulization. Mixing of drugs of various formulations in the nebulizer cup is recommended if there is no haziness, change in color or change in odor. Only then. Mouthpiece is the interface recommended over face masks especially with the use of anticholinergic drugs. Front loaded face masks are preferred to bottom loaded masks for better drug delivery and to minimize the risks, the latter being used only for patients with anticholinergic drugs. 
Pacifier equipped masks are more useful for infants even the hood interfaces preferred over masks in infants and neonates. The blow by technique is no longer is not recommended at all for nebulization. HFNC is recommended for nebulized therapy with high efficiency and nebulizer should be cleaned after each use, should be thoroughly washed with liquid soap once or twice a week and should finally be rinsed with sterile water. Thank you so much for a very patient listening and watching and please do share the knowledge for maximum benefit of everyone. Thanks a lot.